Hey there, smart home enthusiasts, and welcome back to the official YoLink YouTube channel. In today's video, we're excited to introduce you to a brand new product from our FlowSmart series, the FlowSmart All-in-One. This advanced product enhances your home's safety by utilizing ultrasonic technology to monitor your home's water consumption. It will detect unusual water usage based on parameters that you can customize in the app and either alerts you or automatically turns off the water to prevent potential damage. The FlowSmart All-in-One lets you monitor and control the flow of water in your home by using a high accuracy ultrasonic water meter and built-in shutoff valve. This smart system can detect leaks, monitor water temperature, and automatically shut off water to prevent damage, potentially saving you thousands of dollars and weeks of hassle. Now before we jump in, we've included timestamps in the description if you want to skip around. Alternatively, you can use the chapters in the video below for quick navigation. So let's get started. Now for our first main topic, let's take a look at some basics about where the FlowSmart all-in-one needs to be installed, along with some important considerations. Now, just like on the original FlowSmart system, the first step is determining where to install the all-in-one. This system needs to be part of your main incoming water line. Now you can certainly tackle this project yourself if you're comfortable with plumbing, or feel free to hire a local plumber if you prefer. But today, I'll show you how to install this product on your own. So for today's example, we're gonna use PEX water lines. If your home has copper or another type, you'll need to adjust these installation instructions accordingly. Now in most homes, the ideal location is right after your master water shutoff valve inside your home. This will allow you to monitor all the water flowing through your house. Now, like we saw with the original FlowSmart, if you have an irrigation or sprinkler system installed outdoors in an in-ground box, you won't be able to track the usage of your sprinklers. This is because in most homes, the water comes from the city meter, through the pipe in the ground, and into your home. A sprinkler or irrigation system taps off that pipe that's in the ground, so you won't be able to actually monitor the usage of those systems. However, if you want to monitor your sprinkler system, you can install the all-in-one before the split outdoors, or you can purchase a second all-in-one to monitor your irrigation system. This lets you track your sprinkler usage and potentially avoid a costly leak or break. Now we're not going to be covering outdoor installation in this video, but it is an option for warmer climates. One major upgrade of the FlowSmart All-in-One over previous versions is the ability to install it either horizontally or vertically. For a horizontal installation, you're going to need to create a U-shape with the pipes in order to prevent air from accumulating inside the meter. The meter needs to be installed below the inlet and outlet pipe. If necessary, you can install the inlet of the meter even with the inlet of the pipe. However, the outlet pipe needs to be higher than that of the meter. Now, for a vertical installation, you need to ensure that the water flow enters from the bottom and exits from the top. You can verify the water flow is going the correct direction by referencing the arrow on the side of the meter. Now, you are not able to install the meter where the inlet is at the top and the outlet is at the bottom. You also want to make sure that the outlet pipe extends a few inches above the meter in order to prevent air bubbles from accumulating in the meter's measuring pipe. You're going to also need to determine the size of your water line. This can be done by checking the markings on the side of your water line. Most homes in the United States have either a 3 quarter inch or 1 inch supply line. Once you determine the pipe size, you can order the correct FlowSmart add-on system and the necessary accessories. Additionally, a check valve needs to be installed on the inlet of the meter. Now, the FlowSmart All-in-One is actually powered off of an included built-in 10-year lithium battery, providing long-term reliability. But optionally, you can purchase a power adapter from the Yolink website in order to run this off of AC mains, meaning that you don't have to worry about battery life and extending the overall life of the system. Like most Yolink products, you can use our exclusive D2D or device-to-device -device technology to directly connect the FlowSmart All-in-One to one of Yolink's range of leak sensors. This ensures that if the sensor detects a leak, the valve will close even if your hub is down. Now for all of our water control and metering products, please check out our full selection at YoSmart.com. Now that we understand all the information, let's unbox the FlowSmart All-in-One system. Here's what you'll find inside the box. You'll find the FlowSmart All-in-One ultrasonic controller, two of the spud couplings, two of the coupling nuts, two rubber gaskets, and a quick start guide. We'll talk about how to assemble all of this and any additional accessories needed for your specific installation in the next section. Now before we start our installation, double check with your local codes and ordinances before modifying your plumbing. Some cities may have special rules. Now for our recommended installation location, 
we're going to be installing this downstream from our master shutoff valve. It's always important to keep the master shutoff valve in your systems for emergencies. Plus, you won't need to call your local water company to turn your water off for this installation. Now for the quickest and easiest installation, with PEX or copper lines, you can use SharkBite brand adapters. Alternatively, if you have PEX lines, you can use crimp style connectors, as long as you have the proper tools. For all these additional parts, make sure you're using the correct size for your water lines. So you're going to need two male NPT to PEX adapters to adapt to your existing water line type. So again, you could use a SharkBite brand adapter if you're using PEX or copper. You're gonna need a check valve, also sized appropriately, and a quarter turn shutoff valve. You're gonna need four 90 degree elbow fittings if you're installing this horizontally. You also need some scrap, PEX, or water line. And of course, we're gonna need Teflon tape. Now as far as tools go, you're gonna need a pipe cutter, the appropriate size wrenches, and if you are using the SharkBite adapters, you will need one of SharkBite's deburring and measuring tools. These are great because not only do they take the edge off of a sharply cut line, they also tell you where to mark your depth gauge to know that you've pressed in the adapter correctly. And of course, to make things easier, I always make sure to have towels and buckets nearby. So let's start on the installation. The first step is we need to turn off the master shutoff valve. Next up, we need to drain all the lines by opening a basement sink or outdoor spigot at the lowest point in your house. Now for either horizontal or vertical installation method, you can go ahead and dry fit all your connectors together to make sure it's all gonna fit. This means you can just fit things together to make sure it all is in the correct orientation and you get the sizing correct. You will need to install the spud connectors on the FlowSmart to achieve this. This is as simple as threading the nut through the spud connector. Make sure you have the O-ring on the inside facing the meter itself. You do not need to use Teflon tape on this fitting. For either method, we're gonna to need to install the check valve on the inlet side of our FlowSmart all-in-one. You will need to use one of your male threaded adapters on the inlet side of the check valve. Just make sure you're paying attention to the direction of the flow of the water by referencing the arrow on the side. Now, if we're doing the horizontal installation method, we will need to create two 90 degree bins. Then we need to add a short scrap piece of PEX and then another 90 degree elbow connector on either side. This creates our U shape. Then on the outlet side, we need to add our quarter turn check valve. Then another threaded adapter. Repeat the same process to add the two elbow adapters on the outlet side. Now, if you choose the vertical installation method, it's even easier because we only need to install the check valve and the quarter turn valve if you're using a straight piece of pipe going vertically. Now note, if you do need to make room because of other obstacles, you can do the same U shape that we did on the horizontal method, but just flip it for vertical. Then we can use this temporary U to hold up against our water line and measure and mark where you want to install the system. So just follow the diagram in the instruction manual or linked below. So again, once you have everything held up, you can mark on your existing water line where you need to cut, but make sure you cut a little bit inside, so actually cutting less of the line. That way, if you do make a mistake, you can actually cut more off and not have to end up extending the system out. Now comes the scary part. We're gonna make a cut into our existing water line and remove the unnecessary section. Then we need to deburr the cut edges and mark the correct depth for the adapters if you're using SharkBite. Go ahead and install the adapters on your main water line. Work outside in, securing each of the sections one at a time, saving the spud connectors on the meter for last. While you are reassembling the water line, make sure that you add Teflon tape to any of the threaded connectors. Do not add Teflon tape to the threaded connector on the FlowSmart all-in-one. Finally, once all those are done, get everything lined up and then tighten down the two spud connectors onto the FlowSmart meter. Once everything's secured and you are ensured that everything is tight, go ahead and close the installed shutoff valve on the other side of the meter, and then slowly turn back on your master water shutoff. This way, if you do run into any leaks, it's much easier to get that water drained out than have your whole water line filled up again. If you find any leaks, quickly shut off the master valve and get those snugged down. Then you can feel free to turn the water line back on, check for leaks, and then, then open the outlet valve to send water to the rest of the system. Don't be concerned if no water flows. It probably means the internal shutoff valve is off inside the FlowSmart. 
You can quickly open the valve by pressing the set button under the access door on the meter. Now with the installation complete, let's get the FlowSmart system set up in our Yolink app. If this is your first Yolink product, we have a dedicated video on how to set up the hub. Links are down in the description. So if you already have your Yolink hub set up, adding the FlowSmart all in one is straightforward. So first of all, we have to open up our Yolink app and click on the scanner icon. This will open up the QR code scanner. Then we simply have to open the door in order to see the QR code here on the front. So we'll just scan that QR code. We'll see the meter has been detected by the app. All we have to do is give it a name, add it to a room if we have one, and mark it a favorite. Then click Bind Device. So then in the Yolink app, we'll actually see the signal level, battery level, and current meter reading all on the main home screen. We have the ability right here to control the on and off of the valve. Now if we click on it, we'll go into the main screen for the device. So from here, again, we can see the signal and battery level. We've got the meter reading, which is the total gallons that the meter has seen. Of course, you can change this to a different unit in the settings. We've got current water temperature. Then below that, we can see the last time that the meter updated and then press the refresh button to manually refresh it. Below that, we've got the total water consumed today and the total water consumed this last month. And then finally below that, we have the measurement graph showing the water consumption over the last 24 hours. And if we click on more measurement data, it takes us into another screen where we can set custom timeframes to report on or see the last hour, day, or month automatically. We can then press the export button to export the file to a CSV. Below the graph, we have manual control over the valve, just like we do on the main screen. And then we have two other submenus, timer and schedule. If we go into timer, this allows us to set a time period that we want the valve to open or close. So we can have it set turn on after a set amount of time or turn off. And this can be in hours and minutes that you can set custom in here. Then back on the main screen, we'll click schedule. Then in here, we can create different schedules to allow us to automatically turn on and off the water at different times of the day. You can set a turn on time and a turn off time and then which day of the week you want it to repeat on. So you could set it to turn off water when you go to work, Monday through Friday, and then turn back on when you get home. You can also set up multiple schedules if you wanna have different schedules for different times or days of the week. And then the last option on the main screen is the history. This will take you into the history screen where you can see any alerts and when the valve was open or closed. You can also export this to a CSV file by pressing the down arrow on the top right hand corner. Now, if we click the three dots in the top right hand corner, it'll take us into the details for the device. So from in here, we can change the name, we can change the room, and we can set it as favorite. We also have quick access to the history and the historical measurement data screens. Next up, we have the alert option. So in here, we can change the alarm strategies. If you need more information on this, please see our hub video, but we'll probably wanna set this to always, so we always get the alert when it's triggered. We can set an open reminder where we get notified if the valve has been open for longer than a period of time. Then below that, we can set whether or not we want this to be a continuous or one-time alarm. Continuous meaning that it will continue to repeat the alert until you clear it. And then finally, we have a freeze detection parameter. This allows us to set up an alert where we get notified if the water temperature drops below a certain value. This is helpful if you have a vacation home or an off-grid cabin where you need to know if you're approaching the freezing point, so that way you can shut off water to prevent damage in the winter. Then below that, we have the option to synchronize the time with the current clock on our device. Then we get into the valve settings. So currently we see the valve state is open, and then below that we have the option for valve maintenance. This allows you to set either once a week or once a month for the valve to do maintenance, where it automatically closes and then opens. This allows you to test the valve periodically to ensure that it works good in an emergency. Below that, we have the current water meter reading and the advanced settings for the water meter. So here's where we can change the units to either gallons or cubic meters. Then below that, we can determine the schedule for leak detection. So we can either have leak detection turn on always, off, or set it to a specific schedule where we can create our own custom schedule. You can have it set to either just alert you, or if you click this button here, it'll automatically turn off the valve if one of the leak alerts has been deployed. We can set a leak threshold where if a 
certain amount of gallons goes through the system, it'll automatically shut off. So if we set this to 100 gallons, after it reaches over 100 gallons, it'll turn off automatically. Then below that, we have continuous water usage. This will limit the amount of water that can pass through in one session. So the meter can actually determine when no water is flowing and reset that time period. So basically, if you have a continued usage of water that exceeds, say, 20 gallons in one go, it will automatically detect it as a leak and then turn off if you have that option set. Or below that, you can also set the maximum continuous duration, meaning if water is being consumed continuously for a period of time, it'll automatically turn off and treat it as a leak. Then finally below that, we have all of the technical information like model, device, EUI, serial number, signal intensity, battery, and then firmware. Please pay attention to the firmware. If there is an update available, you'll see a little note and an option to update the firmware for the device. So to sum things up, the Yolink FlowSmart All-in-One provides an advanced feature set to improve your water management and home safety. With the added accuracy of ultrasonic technology and all-in-one design, it's both flexible and durable, making it a valuable addition to any smart home configuration. Now, if you need any additional support or have questions about setting up your Yolink FlowSmart All-in-One or any of our other products, please visit our support page at yosmart.com support or reach out to our dedicated support team at service at yosmart.com. Thank you for watching today's video. We hope this tutorial has been helpful. Now stay tuned for more smart home tutorials coming your way.